So way back in 2019, I reviewed this gem of a bicycle here. And at the time I thought that it was the most budget friendly XC, uh, more race oriented hardtail that you could get on the market. And I just assumed that after a couple of years that it was time to revisit this bicycle, see if that thought still holds true. And yes, I will weigh this thing, but let's not forget this is going to be more of like my first look style videos. I'll give you my impression on this bike. We'll go over the specs of this bike. We'll go over the price on it, tell you what I think. So I don't have months and months on this bike. So I'm not gonna do a complete review. It'll be more of a first impression number we're going for here. Also, if you've been following my channel, um, I appreciate it. If you haven't, please consider subscribing. Uh, every little bit helps. As you all know, this is not a race video. I was supposed to race this past weekend, but if you live in and around the South, you know that we got a bad snowstorm. The race got canceled because they just didn't want people slipping around and crashing trying to get into a stupid bike race. So if you wanna see my build up to this event that I'm doing, it's it's gonna be an interesting one. I'm, I built a special bike just, I, I built a special bike just for the occasion that I'm super excited to do, but that's not what you're here for today. You're here for this beauty. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into this bike and then I will give you my impression of it. The frame is of course an aluminum Orbea Ois. It is hydroformed. It's all aluminum that I just think I said that, so that's the second time I said it. It's a boost spacing, obviously. It's a press fit bottom bracket and it is uh, got the eye line feature. If you don't know what eye line is, it's uh, actually pretty sexy. The rights to use the eye line frame technology was just purchased by Canyons. You know, chalk one up for the Urbea boys because now Canyon is gonna be using their internal frame routing because it is that good. I, I won't say it's like better performance wise, but it looks really freaking good. And what I'm talking about with the eye line is if you can see it here, it is this guy. So this bike, takes a little knock because it doesn't have the lockout on the front and the rear. It does have a lockout just for the front shock, but the rear shock does not have a, a lockout up on the handlebars, a remote lockout. So what iLine does is it takes the remote lockout up here, routes it internally, and if I can see this, pops out right in here. So it makes everything really sleek. There's no external cables, nothing running you know, outside of the frame here to attach to the shock. It looks really good, especially compared to something like what even Giant has. You're still gonna see a little bit of that cable running. That eye line is strictly, strictly to, in my opinion, make the bike look better. It's, that, that's it. The downfall to the eye line though, if you wanna upgrade your shock and you still want to retain that remote lockout, you have to get a eye line rear shock. Uh, so keep that in mind. That's, that's just something to, to think about. Or you can do like me and just don't have a remote lockout for the rear. Speaking of suspension, the rear shock is a Fox Eyeline DPS Performance. It is 120 millimeters of travel in the rear end of this bicycle. And of course the rear shock is custom tuned for the Orbea always. The fork is a Fox 32 Float Rhythm 120 and it does have the remote lockout with this guy. The crank set is a, it is just a standard Orbea crank. Contact points on this puppy, so like handlebars, stem, seat posts, they're just Orbea's proprietary stuff. Not amazing, a little bit heavy. Crank is definitely heavy, uh, but it, they work, they're good. They're not, they're not terrible, not terrible. But the shifters and the derail your, not plural, are Shimano Dior 12 speed. I like the Shimano Dior 12 speed stuff. Haven't really had a problem out of it. And if we're comparing SRAM to Shimano, the entry level Shimano stuff, which is what this bike is coming with, is head over heels better uh, than the SRAM SX stuff. The SRAM SX stuff, I think, it, I have heard tales that SRAM is trying to redesign the SRAM SX line. N not a super redesign, they're just putting nicer materials on it, so it quits breaking. We have had a lot of the SRAM SX derailures not last more than a couple months. Um, some only last a handful of rides before they start bending just from the load of shifting. 
there, that's a whole nother video, not getting into it. I like Shimano Dior. And then the wheels on this guy, the wheels are actually gonna be AR30s. They are race face, right? AR's race face, right? Yes, I had to be sure. So they are race face AR30s, uh, but they are laced up to just some Shimano hubs, nothing fancy. Guys, these wheels are just to get you rolling. They are actually relatively heavy, and that is one of the first things I would change out on this bike. So what do I actually think about this bike? Talk about the frame first. You guys know I am in love with my Orbea, but I've always had a hard time not having an aluminum Orbea because they look so good. You would honestly, I mean, look, look, look at this thing. Look at this thing. That is aluminum right here. All of this, and it is how they produce their frames. This guy's made in Spain. They sand all the welds, they hydroform them, they sand them again, they look beautiful. I mean, this is all reminiscent of the old Cannondale days, like back when those things were made in the States. So I honestly have a hard time buying a carbon Orbea because this is more of a talking point. Like, like I've said in tons of other Orbea videos, you could convince people you had a carbon bike from a, from a slight distance because the aluminum looks so good. You have to actually try and find the welds on this thing. And it does have a lifetime warranty on the frame. We have been dealing with a couple warranties from old, like 2014, 2012 bikes from Orbea, and they still cover a warranty as long as you're the original owner. Great company to work with so far. So now if we take the bike as a whole, you all, you all know that I like the frame, but do I still have that impression that this is the best budget-friendly XC race bike at a whopping $3,300? Um, so I have a really hard time doing is this bike worth it kind of videos in today's time because to me if you can find a bicycle right now it's worth the money. It's hard to find anything especially in a full suspension bike around that three grand price point. So for comparison when I did the video uh, 2019 so that's like three years ago this bike was like 2600 bucks it had SLX on it. Now the drivetrain got a knock, it's Dior, which is still good stuff, not talking too bad on it, but it's 3,300 bucks. That's how much this stuff has went up since the start of the pandemic. And if you have tried to purchase anything, you've been in similar situations where you're, you're finding this out. I had a guy call the day and tell me that he, he can't even find just generic tires for his vehicle because they're sold out, he's got a weight on them. We've all been through this, we all know I'm not gonna harp on it too much, but I think you have to define what budget friendly or budget in general means to you. And to me, whenever I talk about a, um, a, a budget friendly XC race bike, full suspension budget to me means that you get all of the modern amenities of the higher end stuff. So if you were to take this bike, what is different between it and the bike that I'm riding that is a full carbon frame? My bike retailed at uh, 45 a couple years ago because I've been on this thing for a while because you can't get anything. So what is different between it? It's really, how lightweight stuff is and how stiff it is. It is a one by 12. It's got 120 mil of travel. It's got a decent suspension design. Decent as in this is a single pivot design. It's what pretty much everybody uses in terms of like a cross country bike. Even the brand new Giant Anthem has went back to a single pivot design because it is the best bang for your buck and easy to market because it's lightweight, it's stiff. It's, it's a decent suspension design. I'm a little disappointed Giant went back to it, but we're not here to talk about Giant. But Rebea, one reason I like them is because they don't, uh, they don't try to convince you that they came out with something brand new and revolutionary. They even claim that this bike has had the same suspension design for like the past, I, I don't wanna put words in their mouth, but it's been a while, like five to eight years. No redesign on how the suspension works. They just redesigned the frame to make the suspension work better with the Orbea frame, if, if that's making any sense. So they keep talking about how they just tweak it, they don't redesign it, which I like the honesty, Orbea, I do. That's, you guys all know I'm about honesty, so I like that. So to me, when we define budget-friendly XC race bike, that's right around this three grand mark. Really, when you go above this price point, let's say you start paying four grand, five grand, that four grand price point's gonna get you closer to something that's a carbon frame, might be the exact same specs, and then when you go up to like five grand, you're gonna get like a carbon set of wheels with it. So you're really just subtracting weight the more you spend after this bike. 
Now, good question. How much does this puppy actually weigh? Let's take a look. If you're saying this is a race bike, uh, for it to be almost 30 pounds, um, th it's a little, little heavy for a race bike, but, 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 this bike's coming with a heavy set of wheels that are tubed. You have to convert it to tubeless. So the very first thing I would do is convert this thing to tubeless, get used to the bike, save some money up, and eventually buy a new set of wheels. A new set of wheels will knock minimum a couple pounds off this thing. Then you can start thinking about other parts on the bike, like the crank, stem, handlebars. They're heavy on this bike, I'll be honest. You can knock a lot of weight off of it just by swapping that stuff out. We had one two years ago, all aluminum. That's what the guy wanted. He put a bunch of his parts on it that he had. Some of them were carbon. I can't tell you what they were exactly because I don't remember, but our, we got that aluminum Orbea always down to about 25 pounds which is very respectable uh, in today's age. So I still love this bike. I think it is spec appropriate for the price point, especially in today's age. I would rate this thing a solid eight out of 10. Eight out of 10, only because I would give it a seven out of 10 because it's a little heavy. This is just off the top of my head, guys. Don't take this for anything as like hard evidence. But the only reason I rate it a little bit higher is because of how good the welds and the seams are on this bike. Uh, you can't get a giant that's aluminum and the welds look this good. So there you have it. The Orbea Oise H30. Beautiful bicycle. Hope you guys enjoy. The next one again will hopefully be a race video. That's what I got for you. I'm talking, talking too much now, rambling, trying to make sure I didn't forget anything. Love you all. See you in the next one. Bye bye.